when you expose yourself to so much as social media you find yourself comparing your life or your lifestyle with other people that have they have created this content to show you this part of their life this is not who they really are you know so when you compare yourself or you look at uh, and you're spending hours and hours and hours and hours watching and oogling and enjoying other people's lives this can have a negative effect on you because you start to uh, think about luck within yourself and once you start putting luck within your subconscious mind that's all you will get you will lack the love that you see on social media you will lack the the cars that you see on social media you will lack that body that you see on social media Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are and at whatever time you're watching. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for hitting that subscribe button and notification bell to be alerted when I upload new videos. So guys, for, uh, for those who are new to my channel, a warm, warm, warm welcome to you guys. And my name is Linda Mohaki Robbins. And what I do on this channel is share my life and basically in the form of personal development growth. And I share nuggets that can help you become a better version or the best version of yourself. So guys, without much further ado, let's get on to this video. And as the title says, it's seven habits to love yourself. And I have all the points on my piece of paper here so I don't forget because I tend to uh, rumble on when I hit one point and then I forget oh, where was I and what was I talking about just like I'm doing now. So guys, without much further ado, let's get on to the video. So with my first habit, number one that I want to share with you is respect your own boundaries. And like, what I mean with that is like, know your limits, you know, know when to say no when to accept certain situations um, or when to actually, you know, basically it's just knowing what you can and can accept in your life. When it comes to relationships, when it comes to family gatherings, family relationships and work relationships as well, know your boundaries. Don't accept things or do things that you know will compromise your, your own self and then the end will lead to you probably hating yourself and being frustrated and stressed. So knowing and your boundaries and limiting yourself to your boundaries and sticking to your boundaries will help you to be more loving to yourself. That's my number one. Number two is trust your inner self, your intuition. It's so important to listen to that voice inside of you. That voice inside of you is your guiding light. It guides you through your life journey in this uh, universe, in this time that you're here. So when you learn how to hear your voice speak and what it's saying to you from inside, you will always be making the choices that are perfect for you and your life journey and where you want to go. And one way you can do this is by getting in touch with yourself from inside, like meditation, going on silent retreats, uh, and just quieting yourself down and reflecting from the inside. That way you'll be able to trust your intuition and you'll be able to hear your voice clearly. This takes a lot of practice and a lot of time, just like in anything else. We're not born knowing these things, we have to learn them. So give yourself time and patience to learn this and learn your intuition and to be able to hear your voice. So my number two was trust your inner self. Number three is how Please have a self-care routine. Now, a self-care routine is not only having beauty, nails, and everything like that done. It's when you take time for yourself to love yourself, to give yourself the nourishment that you need, to take a walk in nature, do things that make you feel happy, full, and complete. That's self-care. You know, um, whether it's sitting down, reading a book, or having a cup of coffee, in, put it in a thermos and just going and drinking your cup of coffee at a bench in the forest or a park and just watching the world go by and just relaxing and taking that time for yourself. Have some sort of self-care routine that you do on a weekly basis. And this, this is known as showing love to yourself. You've got to show this love to yourself so that you can have enough to give to others. So my number three is have a self-care routine that really focuses on you and loving yourself. Number four, find your intention. Now, I have made some, some videos also about goals and things like that. 
but the number one thing that will make you actually achieve your um, your goals is knowing what your intention is whilst you're here on this universe now for example what do I mean with uh, this say for example you have an intention of um, ending world hunger you know of course you can't do it by yourself but if that's your intention is contributing to the ending of world hunger that being your intention everything you do will focus towards that so when you for example if you if that is your intention so you think okay what volunteer service can I join that uh, works toward works towards ending world hunger boom you find one sometimes we are bombarded with charities where we need to contribute money to give money for certain things so you already have an intention so you you go to the charity that is striving to end uh, world hunger and make your contribution there so having that intention for you gives your life meaning and purpose and uh, and strengthens you to to continue to be you know to work hard in your intention and this can work for anything else you know anything that you set out to do for yourself figure out what your intention is and then work towards that way that way you're showing yourself love and you're living on purpose and with a meaningful life so that's number four. <sighs> what number was that? Uh, yes, number four. Excuse me. Number five is your decision making. You need to look at how you make your decisions. And, um, is it a need based decision or based on want? See, once you figure out, you know, for example, let's talk, let's uh, simplify this a little bit. So you. For example, you want a bigger TV, right? You want, want a bigger TV. The question you should ask yourself, do I need that? Is that something that I need or is it just a want? So you will decide what are your priorities when it comes to, you know, the things that you want or need. So in my opinion, the wants, 10, 19, 70 or 80% of the time tend to be things that you really don't really need. And, um, you could look like you could look into that and say you know you could ask yourself these kinds of questions like hey, do I need that is that something I need or is it just a one that I want I don't want a bigger TV what do you do with a bigger TV first of all number one the question is what is your TV for if it's just for you know an hour a week or an hour or two a week so what is the point of having a bigger TV see where I'm going with that guys so really look at the way you make your decisions and base them on a, on a need based than a want based that was my number uh, five. Oh, we got through this so fast. This could be a short video, but sometimes, you know, you're probably in a rush and, and you just saw my video pop up and you're like, oh my God, there's Linda. Oh, and it's only 10 minutes, so I can watch that whilst I do my makeup. Hence this video. There I was rumbling again, but I love doing this video. So anyway, let's go on to our number six. Number six is choose what you expose yourself to when it comes to social media. Find things that empower you, that are within your intention purpose and overall well-being so by this is like you know I think I've talked about this in one of my um, videos uh, it's about comparison you know when you expose yourself to so much a uh, social media you find yourself comparing your life or your lifestyle with other people that have they have created this content to show you this part of their life this is not who they really are you know so when you compare yourself or you look at uh, and you're spending hours and hours and hours and hours watching and oogling and enjoying other people's lives this can have a negative effect on you because you start to uh, think about luck within yourself and once you start putting luck within your subconscious mind that's all you will get you will lack the love that you see on social media you will lack the the cars that you see on social media you lack that body that you see on social media because you're comparing and wishing you had it so if you limit your social media um, um, time and when you do actually go on social media watch things that will empower you watch um, uh, content from people who that you admire of who they have become and what they're doing and it's inspiring and you know, you're thinking, yeah, that is something to look forward to. Just watching other people's lifestyle all the time can have really 
negative effects in your own well-being and at the end of the day you're trying to show yourself some love so this is no way of comparing yourself with other people's what they want you to see on social media is really having a negative effect on your own self-love loving yourself um, journey so yeah number six choose carefully what you watch and expose yourself on social media we're down to number seven this was easy breezy um easy breezy lemon squeezy yeah i think that's what they say so number seven oh yeah let's uh, i think we'll spend some time on this one is take risky opportunities every opportunity has challenges and these challenges require risks risks and every dream demands a leap of faith so what does that mean okay let's use an example of uh, a job yes a job is a good is a good one because i've done that myself so there's a job that comes up and you know it's with another organization and it's not where you're working and you know that um for example you have been working for this organization for a number of years but you felt that your life has just become stagnant it's not moving forward there's no opportunities for growth and yeah there's nothing more for you to do within the organization but they have good benefits and they uh, at the moment and they have uh, good uh, holidays you get more holidays or whatever the case may be that you like but but you know the job is mm, mundane and then comes this other job it's a job with the prospects of you getting higher than because when you this job that you're current in is here and this other job is here and this one has a potential of growing and growing and growing and so you've been here for so long so you're quite used to being here and you've built up uh, quite a stable situation for yourself here and you know if you stayed here for the next 20 years that you will have a pension and that's that will be your life whereas this one is risky it's very exciting it's challenging good pay with potential of growth so this is the kind of risk that you should take of course there's um, there will be obstacles to to overcome because you're going to have to uh, consider maybe maybe the job is another 10 kilometers away from where you live so that you you know there's a lot of factors that you probably might need to consider on the new job but the thing is here that i'm trying to say is that taking that leap of faith and taking that risk and knowing that this is what you want will give you that energy that this particular position has uh, leveled out you know has remained stagnant you will feel alive you will feel like Oh, this is risky but yeah, this is so what I wanted to do um, I love the money I okay uh, it's a challenge for me I maybe have to travel and learn new people and build a reputation within the organization but I so love what this job is offering that is a, taking a risk uh, um, to leave a stable position and one that you're not sure uh, not that you're not sure you're sure that you can do the job but you know it's a new job, so it comes with, with risks. You've got the three-month uh, trial basis, depending whether it's three months or a month. You've got to make new friends, your colleagues. You've got to prove yourself. You've got to do all these things. But these things are going to keep you alive than the these ones that are, you know, made you stagnant. So there's a good example of a risk that you can take. So guys, um, that was my seven. What was it? Seven habits to love yourself and. Uh, I hope I have shared some nuggets with you guys and I hope you found something useful in there that you can do and uh, yeah comment below if you have or if you have anything else to add about loving yourself and um, yeah guys that's uh, that's it for me really short and sweet how many minutes was that oh man this has got to be my shortest video ever but anyway sometimes we like to keep it short so thank you so much guys for watching my video and I will see you guys on my next one. Have a wonderful day, evening, night, wherever you are and love one another. Bye until next time.